My name is Michael Stevens and I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic. I'm specifically interested in inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis in children. I'd like to talk about an article that was published recently in the journal Inflammatory Bowel Diseases that looks at a unique group of patients. Uh, this group of researchers led by Professor Grimbrocker in Freiburg, Freiburg Germany, uh, focused on what we call early onset inflammatory bowel disease. That refers to patients who are at least under the age of 10, and some would argue under the age of 6 or 7 when they develop manifestations of IBD. What many people have begun to realize is that these patients tend to have more rare diseases than the general term inflammatory bowel disease, and often they're caused by a specific single genetic defect or, or, or a problem with, this, with one specific gene. This group of researchers looked at 71 patients and they compared sequencing a targeted amount of their genetic material focusing on 28 genes as opposed to trying to sequence a much broader, in a, in a much broader way, what's called whole exome sequencing. In whole exome sequencing, they sequence basically everything that codes for something that we know is meaningful, what's called the exons. <clears throat> Some of the downsides of whole exome sequencing is uh, you can actually have, what I would say in, in a simple way, reading errors. You may actually miss variations, and there are certain types of changes that it's not capable of identifying. So by targeting these 28 genes, they get very accurate information about those specific genes, but no other areas. They found that um, in, uh, out of the 71 patients, they found uh, important variants that changed the diagnosis for the patient in uh, seven of those patients. And by comparing that to whole exome sequencing, they really didn't identify any new information. One of the advantages of the targeted sequencing is that it's a lot less expensive and uh, it doesn't come with some of the ethical pitfalls that we find with whole exome sequencing. When patients have whole exome sequencing, it's likely or possible that we could find uh, information that's unrelated to the question at hand uh, that may be, that may be uh, uh, important in that patient's health care. One classic example of that is uh, Huntington's chorea, which is a disease of the neurologic system that happens in uh, usually in the patient's 30s or 40s. <clears throat> Not everybody wants to know that they're at risk for that disease. And so that's, a, that's one example of how the ethics of whole exome sequencing can make that more complex when introduced into clinical care. So the conclusion of the, of the article was that doing genetic testing, particularly panel testing, can be helpful in patients with early onset IBD. I think what we've all learned and, and, and what this illustrates is that you actually need to do a more comprehensive evaluation and it's not just genetic testing, whether it's a panel test of tests or whole exome sequencing, but also functional analysis of, of the immune system and, and a multidisciplinary approach.